Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Micah and I don't normally sound like this, but I'm getting over some kind of cold or flu. So please just disregard that. But as the title suggests, we'll be going over Microsoft Grav, giving you an overview of what it is and some of the use cases and then the activity logs, which is kind of a new feature I think introduced last year around November. And it's basically an audit trail of that of Microsoft Grav activity and then how to ingest those logs. And then we'll be registering an app to be able to query the API for the first time using a bit of Python. And then we'll be able to see exactly how those logs look within the log analytics workspace. And that's a mouthful, um, but it's super, super simple. And so without further ado, let's get straight into it. All right, so what is Microsoft Graph? It is a unified API endpoint that allows developers to access a wide range of Microsoft 365 services and it provides a single REST API endpoint that developers can use to interact with these various services, including Azure Active Directory, Exchange Online, SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, and uh, OneDrive, and a lot more. Some of the common use cases are developing custom productivity apps, automating business processes, and creating intelligent applications that leverage Microsoft 365 data. And um, one thing that comes to mind for automating business processes, if you're an IT admin, and you have to do all these things whenever a user is terminated, you can pretty much automate all of that with Microsoft Graph. So deleting the user, revoking access tokens, that kind of thing. And the activity logs. So Microsoft Graph activity logs are an audit trail of HTTP requests that the Graph service received and processed for a tenant. And tenant administrators can enable the collection and configure downstream destinations for these logs using diagnostic settings in Azure Monitor. And we'll do that here in a bit. The logs are stored in log analytics for analysis and you can export them to external SIM tools like um, Splunk, for example, using Azure Event Hubs, or you can send them to Azure Storage for long-term storage. So if you work in security operations or you work as a detection engineer or some kind of you know, security-based entity within that works within Azure, you can use graph activity logs to do a variety of things. And some of the use cases are getting full visibility into the transactions made by applications and other API clients that you have consented to in your tenant. You can identify activities of a compromised user. Um, you can build detections and behavioral analysis around the activity of Microsoft Graph. And then you can investigate unexpected or suspicious privilege assignment of privilege of application permissions. So like the OAuth phishing attacks and things like that. And detect tools like Azure Hound and Graph Runner. And we'll be using these tools and building detections for them in a later video. So stay tuned for that. So if you wanna quickly get started with Microsoft Graph, there's a tool created by Microsoft called Graph Explorer. It gives you a bunch of sample data that you can query using the Graph API. And you can see the list of sample queries that you get here. Um, there's stuff like get my profile, we can run that and it should return some fictional data. It says that I'm Megan Bowen. Um, so you can use the graph to like send emails, list users in the tenant. Uh, you can search for things security wise. You can um, get threat intel indicators, um, you know, do like OSINT. You can get host reputation and the list just goes on and on. So definitely check this out if you just want to get started very quickly. And I just thought it would be, you know, valuable to throw that out there. So. There's that. All right, so now we're in Azure and we're going to be creating a resource group and that will house our log analytics workspace as well as our app that we will register here in a second. So let's go ahead and create a resource group and hit create. And if you don't have an Azure subscription, you can get a free 30 day trial and like 200 bucks to spend. So um, just Google you know, Azure free trial. And we're gonna name this mod lab like a zero day lab and then hit next or hit create. And so inside of our resource group, we can create resources. So we're going to create a log analytics workspace. And then we're going to send the graph activity logs here after we create it. So I just searched for log analytics workspace here at the top and then hit create. And that's the awesome thing about these cloud services. Like it's so easy to spin up and you know delete and update all these different things. Um, it's pretty, pretty awesome. 
So I'm going to call these mod or mic zero day logs. And just do a dash one. Cool. Azure was yelling at me because I just deleted a log analytics workspace with the same name. I guess you can't do that within 14 days or use the name within 14 days. All right. So while this is doing its thing, I will step away for a second and then we'll be right back. Oh, that took way shorter than I expected. So let's go to the resource. The next step will be configuring the diagnostic settings to send graph activity logs to this workspace. All right. So let's pivot to the admin center and it's just entre.microsoft.com. It takes you to this default directory and on this left hand panel, there is an identity tab and under it, there will be uh, monitoring and health hit that drop down and then you see di diagnostic settings and within it we will create a diagnostic setting and you can see all the different categories of logs that you can send to a log analytics workspace event hub storage account or partner solution and we're going to be sending the microsoft graph activity logs hopefully you can see that it's pretty tiny um, to the log analytics workspace that we just created and as you see, it's already populated because that's the only one that I have. And I'm just going to name this um, my zero day graph uh, logs. Oops. And hit save. All right. So now let's pivot back to my other tab and we're going to search for um, we are going to search for app registration. And there it is. So new registration and we're going to name this graph test, uh, one accounts in this organization, little directory only. And then we're going to hit register. We just need this client ID and then we need the directory tenant ID. So go ahead and copy these somewhere. And then we're going to pivot into VS code. I have a dev container already spun up. Um, it's the same dev container that I created in the previous video. So I'm using a bit of sample code from the Microsoft get getting started or quick start guide for Microsoft graph. And you can choose a variety of different languages. You see there's Python, PowerShell, PHP. I mean, choose your pick, uh, pick your choice, whatever. And then you can download a sample, a code sample. The only issue is you have to have a developer account or a school or work account. You can't use uh, your personal account. So if you don't have one of these accounts, you can go to my GitHub repo and under dev containers, Microsoft graph dev container dot dev container. There's two Python files and you can download these. And it's the same code from the quick start uh, page. So just an FYI. And I have modified the code a bit here to list all the users in the tenant. So uh, there's basically like this else if statement that um, displays a bunch of different options for the user. And then I created this method get users. And then it's called down here at the bottom. So what is get users actually doing? So get users is saying get users or the get this user object or users object from the graph client. If users and users value is not, are not empty or they have values for each user and users dot value print user ID and user display name. Let's just run it and see exactly what it does. And there's one thing that we have to do before we actually can authenticate to our tenant. We have to, uh, the client ID and the tenant ID that I asked you to write down earlier, we have to replace those values with the information from the app registration that we just created. All right, hit save, and then we can run Python main.py and it's located within, you know, this folder, obviously. All right, so now we have to sign in using a web browser. So we can write uh, control right click or left click and copy our one time uh, code. And then I have to authenticate because I have two factor. Oh, I actually did already. 
So cool. Consent on behalf of your organization. I mean, you don't have to do that. I don't think, but um, I'm the only user in this, or the, actually there's two users, which we'll see in a second. But again, this is like a test or demo account. So I don't care what happens to it. So I've signed into the application that we registered earlier and we're getting an error for some reason. Oh, right, right, right. So I forgot there's this one thing we have to do real quick. So there we have to allow public client flows because just, that's just the way that this authentication works or um, there's probably there may be a better way to do it, but this is the easiest way I've found so far. So um, under the app registration and the app that we registered, there is our authentication tab. And then we need to enable the public client flow and then hit save. Now we should be able to run this Python, authenticate or sign in to with our app and we should not get an error anymore, hopefully. All right, cool. So we can close this window. And so this is the option table that I was speaking about earlier. So you can see the method that I created and then we have our little user prompt it says list all users. So uh, let's just hit one. We're gonna display our access token and then uh, you can list your inbox, but my account doesn't have an inbox, I don't think. Or it's not, yeah, it's inactive. You can send email, um, but again, the method that I created is to list all users. So we're gonna hit four, and we should get a error message, another one, which <laughs> another thing that we have to fix. So uh, like, this is real life, man. Um, authorization request denied. So the issue is, we don't have our user scopes set or our permissions set correct correctly for our app. So to use the list user um, request, we need a few permissions set within the app. So we want to delegate use delegated because we're going to be using the permissions of our um, account versus the application. And so we can just copy copy these. And then we're going back into our app registration and then uh, API permissions, add permission, Microsoft graph, delegated permissions. And then we have our list, which we can't do it like this. Unfortunately, we have, um, I don't know a better way to do this, but I've just been doing them like one by one. So I'll just skip forward. Well, I'll do one and then skip to the rest or to the end. So user read basic all add permission. And then um, I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but I just don't know how. And then I'm just gonna do, or I'm gonna add permissions for each one of these scopes. And I just realized at the end that I didn't need to keep backing out of the uh, menu <laughs> for each permission, but you know, whatever. All right, so cool. Now that we have all of our permissions lined up and added, we can grant admin consent for a default directory. And that will um, cause these statuses to update. All right, cool. So I just granted admin as access for all of these permissions because I'm using my admin account. So, um, you know, it doesn't really matter too much. And again, this is a test account. There's probably some best practices for uh, permission granting and things like that. If you're using, you know, if you're an enterprise or like a business account that you should, you should consider. But again, I don't care about that right now. All right. So going back to our Python. I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to control C out of here or control Z, whatever stops it. Clear our console, run the Python again, once again. This muscle memory at this point. 
and we're going to try to list all users and we have two users let's go verify and make sure that that is correct so we're going to go into azure 8 i mean intra id takes some getting used to go to users and we can see there are exactly two users me and our test user so we have successfully authenticated to the uh, our tenant using Microsoft Graph, our Graph app, and we should see some logs now. And if they're not here immediately, we'll see some here in maybe a few minutes. I think it said wait to fit up to 15 minutes. So if we go to our log analytics workspace and then we go to logs. And there's going to be a oh, there's never there's always a pop up, I guess not this time I'm going to toggle full screen make it a bit easier to see and we can just look for the uh, graph activity logs table so Microsoft graph activity logs and then we're going to just do limit um, limit just limits the amount of results that we get limit 10 not sure exactly what's going to show up so um, we can do the last 30 minutes all right, so we already have a bunch of logs, I guess, from all of those failed attempts earlier. So I had a plan. I knew what I was doing so we could generate logs. Uh, and yeah, there's a bunch of information that's returned. So I'm going to try to keep this simple so I don't have to blur out my uh, IP address. I don't feel like doing too much editing. So but we can see our tenant ID, the time generated, location, um, API version, request method, the status, uh, things like user agent, their request URI, you know, the endpoint that was queried, what time the token was issued, the user ID responsible for the activity, the app ID that's responsible again for the activity that was used by the user, um, the, the scopes of the app. And we can see all those admin permissions that we were talking about, this administrative unit read all, write all, application read all so a bunch of useful information if you care about what activity is going on within your tenant regarding um, app registrations and um, you know things of that nature just anything that the api covers which is a lot so if you aren't already ingesting graph activity logs i highly uh, suggest that you do because you can uncover anomalous activity you can uh, detect things like Azure Hound and Graph Runner, like I was saying earlier, because those create API calls and all of the activity that was previously undetectable because activity logs weren't a thing, you can now. And so, if you aren't using these, you are um, you're missing a very important part of your Azure activity. All right, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's the video. Um, I hope that you got something out of this. And um, I'm going to continue to play around with this a bit. Like I was hinting to earlier, I have some more videos that I would like to do surrounding Azure Hound, Graph Runner, and um, a bunch of other Azure and AWS stuff. Like I said, I'm going to continue down this path of cloud learning and um, getting hands on with this stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a comment, like, subscribe. We highly appreciate it. Stay blessed, and I'll see you on the next one.